Hello, welcome to our Wednesday devotional. I appreciate your spending this time with me. I was challenged recently as I read about the Israelites and their time of wandering in the wilderness. We know they spent 40 years wandering in the wilderness and God allowed an entire generation to pass away before they could enter the promised land. But as I read it this time, uh, it appeared to me that I agree with what A.W. Tozier said, that they were just walking around in circles. They'd become accustomed to it. God was providing all they needed every day. They had all the food they wanted or needed because God provided manna. They didn't have to farm or, or do any raising of crops on their own. Of course, they didn't have houses, but they had gotten they had become comfortable in their tents which were movable, and they would move them from time to time. Interestingly, even their clothes and their shoes didn't wear out. Now, wouldn't that be fun for the ladies? No shopping for 40 years. They had plenty of time to spend with their families. The Lord gave them, for the most part, good health. They had no motivation to go into the promised land. In the first chapter of the book of Deuteronomy, Moses made an announcement. He said, God's been speaking to me, and God says it's time to go. Beginning in verse 6, we read this, The Lord our God spake unto us in Horeb, saying, Ye have dwelt long enough in this mount. Turn you and take your journey, and go. And he tells them exactly where to go. In verse 8, he says, Behold, I have set the land before you. Go in and possess the land which the Lord swear unto your fathers. Again, A.W. Tozier commented on this passage by saying, the enemy that threatened Israel the most was the dictatorship of the customary. Israel had been become accustomed to going nowhere. So long as God kept them safe, they were fine with that. In this passage in Deuteronomy, we see that God told Moses to tell them, it's time to get going. As I read their story, I'm not sure whether they'd given up on reaching the promised land or they had just become comfortable living with this new normal. Either way, their lives centered around this new normal and not around the will of God. I want to challenge us this afternoon to get going. Several years ago, I took a trip with the senior class, the senior class of our Milford Christian School, and the senior trip normally is uh, down to a youth camp, a Christian camp called The Wilds. The Wilds has a lot of things going for it, and on one day during that week we were away, we took a rafting trip down a pretty nice river. It had some rapids and so forth around which we had to navigate, but we were in a raft, and I thought, I could do the navigating. Uh, so, in the raft, I sat in the, in the back, and I sat up higher than everybody else. They all sat down in the raft, and we began going down the river and had a good time for a while. But then we came to some rapids where it swirled us around and it pushed us over toward the edge of the river, and at the edge of the river there were trees hanging over, and one of the boys up in the front of the boat for some reason, grabbed a hold of one of the branches and kind of held on to it and then let go of it as we were propelled on down the river. Well, that branch went over the heads of all those other kids and knocked me right out of the boat. The river was moving pretty fast and they had to rescue me, but when it was all over, it was pretty exciting. I think our church has been navigating some tricky waters. Health concerns have caused a great deal of fear. Governmental restrictions have caused a great deal of fear. Sanitation requirements, hiding our faces behind masks, and not even being permitted to shake hands or hug people as normally we do, has put fear in many of us. Like many others, as your pastor, I led in changes that I thought were appropriate. And I don't think we have made any mistakes that way. I don't think we've done wrongly 
But I think it's time for us to get through these navigate the navigate through these tricky waters and get moving again. I think if we're not careful, we'll become accustomed to going around in circles like Israel was. I believe it's time to move forward again. I'm not sure exactly what that means, but I believe in the next few weeks I'll be announcing some changes as we open up our services and open up opportunities to serve God. We're a church. We need to be marching forward. And though I respect you for considering your health and considering the health of others, we need to be careful, but we need to get going. Let's consider the next step in our church life and follow the instructions that God gave Moses to give to the children of Israel in Deuteronomy 1, verses 6 and 7. You have dwelt long enough in this mount. Turn you and take your journey and go. My challenge today is let's get moving. God bless you. Have a wonderful day.